Dragon Ball. Is there a show out there with more colorful cast of characters? From its clean cut heroes like Goku to its more darker ones like Vegeta, Dragon Ball has a lot of great heroes, but today we're going to be talking about the far more interesting, far more diabolical and deplorable characters of Dragon Ball. We'll be talking about the villains, and how we'll be talking about them, you ask? Well, today I will be ranking the top 10 most evil and treacherous villains in all of the Dragon Ball franchise. So remember to share, like, and hit that subscribe button if you want more content like this. Now let's jump right in. Alright guys, kicking things off at number 10 with Janemba. In life, he was the kingpin of an organized crime syndicate in the demon world. Before he came to hell, initially appearing in the Dragon Ball movie Fusion Reborn, when his soul arrived in the soul cleansing machine, it turned into a monster after taking over the Saikai demon. Janemba's base form he got from possessing the Saikai demon, appearing as a giant yellow obese monster, but would transform like almost every villain anime it would seem, changing from this oversized disturbing looking baby into his Super Janemba form. He would become smaller and human sized but that wouldn't take away from his power oh no he would almost duplicate in power it would seem in his Super Janemba form but in anime you've gotta have that third form and he would eventually achieve the form of Black Janemba where his shoulders resembles Super Janemba's purple form but instead he would be well black. Like many Dragon Ball villains Janemba is a destructive and aggressive monster who seems to have little motivation aside from doing things for lulz. With a sadistic personality and lust for anarchy he is capable of using his power to alter reality to his liking. Now I know what you're thinking with all these powers how is he only at number 10? This guy makes Thanos look absolutely puny. Well Janemba even though he appears to be an unstoppable killing machine well he has one issue well one weakness. What is this you might ask? Well, his powers are deeply connected with his emotional state, meaning that this can be used during battle to unbalance him for a short period of time. Unfortunately for Janemba, this crime lord has a massive ego, so as you'd guess, he is easily offended. He would however prove to be too much still for Goku even in his Super Saiyan 3 form, forcing him to perform the fusion dance with Vegeta and become Gogeta. Gogeta would then fly in, dispose of Janemba and save the day for the entire universe. Coming in at number 9. Sin Shenron. Sin Shenron is the final challenge for Goku and Vegeta in the Shadow Dragon Saga as part of the final arc of the series Dragon Ball GT. When Goku intends on making yet another wish using the Dragon Balls, an insidious black smoke arises from the Dragon Balls. Following this, the black smoke Shenron would then arise. Old Kai urgently explains to a stunned Goku that an overuse of the Dragon Balls over so many years has caused a buildup of negative energy to accumulate within them and disrupt their balance. Each Dragon Ball would take on a form based on a wish made from it. Sin Shenron was born from one of the strongest and most selfless of wishes to revive everyone on Namek that was killed at the hands of Frieza and his soldiers. Sin Shenron is the most egotistical, uncaring and evil hearted of all seven dragons and is easily the most powerful and terrifying. He feels no compassion or care for any form of life or actions he takes, even destroying his fellow shadow dragons if it benefits his ultimate goal of universal destruction. Sin Shenron would stand to be too powerful for Goku and Vegeta, even in their Super Saiyan 4 form. The two Saiyans would turn to the fusion dance once again to become the mighty and unbeatable Gogeta. Unfortunately for them, this time it still was not enough. But luckily, Goku still had one more card up his sleeve. That being the spirit bomb. But not just any spirit bomb, this time Goku would manage to gather energy from across the universe for his universal spirit bomb. Goku unleashes the universal spirit bomb, obliterating Sin Shenron, thus restoring the Dragon Balls and finally bringing the Shadow Dragon's evil to an end. Coming in at number 8, the king of the demon realm, Dobora. Dobora is known as, as actually having a similar power level to the mighty Cell. However, unlike Cell, he was not able to absorb people using a tail, but rather the boar relies on spitting on his opponents. Sounds gross, right? And aside from possibly spreading a virus, it can't possibly be harmful. Well, think again. Saliva from Deborah will turn you to solid stone, as Piccolo and Krillin found out firsthand. Deborah is a creature that has existed for thousands of years, but due to the spell Bobbly placed on him, Deborah is taken under Bobbly's mind control in the age 474 and sends one of his underlings to investigate the earth. And that is where Boo's egg is. The underling finds that there are no warriors on earth with high power levels 
levels, the Boer was given the task of recruiting people into Bob Lee's organisation. Although loyal to his master Bob Lee true and true, his loyalty ultimately proved to be his downfall. Attempting to convince Bob Lee that Boo is uncontrollable and dangerous, Bob Lee does not care to listen. Even though the Boer met his end in a pretty disappointing fashion being consumed by a fat creature, he was ultimately allowed to go to heaven because King Emma felt that the demon realm was way too close to hell. Coming up at number 7, Baby. The second of the GT villains in this list, Baby is the last survivor of the Tuffle race, who was rebuilt by Dr. Mew as a machine mutant to exterminate the Saiyans and restore his kind by controlling everyone on Earth. Baby wasn't all bad. Although he sought the eradication of the Saiyan race, his true purpose was to attempt to revive the Tuffle race that were eradicated by the Saiyans initially. It is shown that he is cunning enough to dominate the dragon team by possessing Vegeta and successfully restoring the Tuffle's home planet. As his name suggests, Baby is also incredibly childish and very immature, making jokes of his opponents and having full-blown tantrums when challenged. Even though he despises the Saiyan race, he does share their love of fighting. Well, this is exactly the type of thing that would lead to a beautiful friendship, you might think. Well, unfortunately not. Upon becoming the golden great ape, Baby pretends that he is on a mindless rampage and massacres countless followers as a means of testing out his abilities. After he receives energy from his followers becoming Super Baby Vegeta, his cruelty becomes more pronounced and he states that each and every living being should be considered his slave. Baby ultimately ends up becoming the very thing he despises to acquire the power of the Saiyans, bringing misery by infecting most of the Earthlings and surviving Saiyan hybrids in order to establish a new Tuffle Empire, with which he planned to conquer the universe, which he feels entitled to rule. Baby leaves Vegeta's body and attempts to escape from planet Tuffle in his spaceship. To his shock, Baby last sight is that Goku firing at 10 times Kamehameha towards his craft, sending it hurling into the sun. Coming at number 6, Zamasu slash Goku Black. Jeez, how many Zamasu? Zamasu's can there be? Zamasu also known as Goku Black in another timeline. Zamasu is shown to be very calm and methodical, but Zamasu often questioned the word of mortals, not trusting in their ability to handle conflict as they were quite prone to starting wars in a repeated cycle. Zamasu would build on those eventually leading him in the pursuit of the destruction of all mortals. Once learning of the existence of the Super Dragon Balls and realizing the potential power he could obtain from them, Zamasu fully gave in to his dark desires, removing all semblance of passion and patience towards others. Zamasu decided to betray and kill his master to make use of Goasu's power for his own goal. Zamasu succeeded in carrying out his plans to kill Goasu and take his Patara earrings and time ring. In his original future, the future Trunks timeline, Zamasu went on to become Goku Black by using these items to gather and use the Super Dragon Balls to switch his body with Goku and then killed Goku who was now inhabiting Zamasu's old body. Future Trunks with very little option had to travel back in time and request help from the past in the original Goku and Vegeta. To their surprise, when they arrive in the future, they're not just greeted by Goku Black, but also by Zamasu. It would turn out the other Zamasu used the Dragon Balls also, but instead of wishing for a change of body, he would wish for invincibility. This would cause Goku and Vegeta to have to go back to their own timeline and find out a new way of trying to take down the villains. The solution? The Evil Containment Wave. Traveling back to the future, they attempt the Evil Containment Wave on Zamasu and were successful, but unfortunately was not able to get the label on in time and Zamasu was able to escape. Zamasu and Goku Black in this situation get furious, use the Pataro earrings and views into a few Zamasu. Not the most inspired name to be honest, but this would force Goku and Vegeta to do the same. But instead of using the Pataro earrings, they would perform the fusion technique. This was still not enough. Trunks would ultimately prove to be successful in their battle. Trunks going for the old faithful. If all else fails, split them in half with my big freaking sword technique. Although it appeared to be the end for Fuse Zamasu, this somehow still wasn't enough. Zamasu would then become one with the entire planet and start eradicating all life everywhere. Goku, earlier in the arc, was presented with a button that could summon Grandmaster Zeno. Pressing this button, Zeno would appear and decide that the entire place was a mess and eradicate the entire universe. While he was eradicating the universe, thankfully our heroes were able to get back on the time machine and back to their own timeline. And number 5, Boo. The incarnation of evil created by the powerful sorcerer Bibbidi would prove too insane for this powerful sorcerer, forcing Bibbidi to lock him away in a seal. Later, Bobbidi, his son, would come and break that seal 
in his quest to destroy the entire universe it would seem. Boo has proven to be the most trickiest of all the villains to dispose of as he is almost completely indestructible. Punch a hole in him? No worries, it'll heal right up. Blow him into thousands of pieces? Not a problem, all of his pieces will join together again. Try burning all the pieces of Boo, the smoke will rise again and reform back into Boo. You get the idea. In fact, the only way to defeat Boo would be to obliterate him off the face of the universe. Boo having many iterations, although all proving to be formidable, almost all of them lacked any sort of interesting personality. First being introduced as Fat Boo, who got that way after absorbing the Grand Supreme Kai, this would cause Boo to become a lot more kinder, as well as a bit more rotund. Expelling steam from his body, the steam would rise and form Evil Boo. Evil Boo would go on to defeat and absorb Fat Boo, transforming him into Diffused Boo. Boo would go on and absorbing Rampage, absorbing Piccolo, Gotenks and Gohan, changing forms multiple times. Vegeta and Goku would this time use the Pataro earrings to become Vegito. Vegito would allow himself to be absorbed using a barrier to stop himself from merging with Boo. If that plan failed well anyway after entering Boo's body Vegeta would separate back into Goku and Vegeta for no explained reason inside they discovered the absorbed warriors Gohan Piccolo and even Fat Boo cocooned inside fused Boo bring these warriors from the cocoon this would cause Boo to revert back to his original form unfortunately this would be his most destructive and evil form. In this form known as Kid Boo, he could easily challenge a god of destruction with just how fast he can blow up planets. He is unchallenged by Goku and Vegeta, taunting them, making fun of them, and not taking the fight seriously, constantly taking time to goof off, even falling asleep in front of Goku. This would ultimately be Boo's failure, as Goku was able to separate from the fight, charge up a spirit bomb, taking energy from all of the universe and launching it right at Boo. This would obliterate Boo right off the face of the earth. And number four is the legendary Super Saiyan, Broly. We're not going to count Bio Broly, as it is maybe the worst piece of Dragon Ball media ever created. Appearing in four movies, three of them were pretty good. Broly being the legendary Super Saiyan. Now, what at this point is so special about being a Super Saiyan? Cell describes it, it's almost as if the ability to turn Super Saiyan is being handed out at a bargain bin sale. But in Broly's case, things are a little different, as usually a Saiyan would get a huge power boost from coming back from the brink of death and although Vegeta and Goku would use emotion to achieve the form of Super Saiyan when Broly is backed into a corner or gets emotional original Broly wouldn't take very much to set off his emotions as just seeing Kakara or otherwise known as Goku would trigger Broly into a uncontrollable fit of rage so much so that he actually even killed his own father why does he hate Goku this much you might ask? Well, when they were babies, Goku used to cry a lot and Broly would be in the bed next to him. The lesson we can all learn from this is not to wake Broly up from his sleep. And number 3, it is Cell. How is Cell not number 1? I hear some people might ask. Well, quite simply, his end goal was kind of underwhelming in the fact that he didn't really have one or really any purpose post killing Goku and destroying the Earth and the rest of the universe. Inevitably, if successful, he would just be floating around space with nothing to do. Maybe he would have bumped into Beerus and been wiped from existence or maybe come across more and formed a beautiful friendship. Cell, an experiment abandoned by Dr. Juro of the Red Ribbon Army who swore vengeance on Goku from wiping out the Red Ribbon Army in the original Dragon Ball anime. Dr. Juro will create Cell using cells from the greatest warriors on earth having Goku and Vegeta cells from their initial battle as well as freeze the cells as the space emperor would travel to earth to get a measure of revenge against Goku however would be defeated by Trunks as well as collecting the cells on Piccolo from his encounter with Goku in the finals of the world championship. The doctor would meet his demise from the hands of his own androids he created 1718 all of these androids just proved to be father for Cell as he absorbed both androids to achieve his perfect form. After achieving his perfect form Cell would decide to bring back the world championship tournament, Goku was not able to defeat Cell. In fact, he allowed his son, Gohan, to become the unlikely hero, as Gohan was able to be the first Saiyan to reach Super Saiyan 2. This form would easily dispatch of Cell. Now on to number 2, the Demon King Piccolo. The original big bad of Dragon Ball franchise appearing in the original series of Dragon Ball, Piccolo, the evil half of the Namekian named Kami, Kami wanting to be the Earth's guardian, would split from his evil side. His evil side would become known as Piccolo and embark on world domination. Piccolo would waste no time putting his evil plan into action, using his minions to seek all seven Dragon Balls, and would dispose of Krillin and defeat Goku fairly quickly. Once Piccolo assembled all seven Dragon Balls, he got his wish of being restored to his eternal youth. Piccolo would then kill the eternal dragon, shocking everyone in the process. Piccolo would then quite easily conquer Earth and let the world fall into total chaos. 
Eventually Goku would return and defeat Piccolo, but not before Piccolo was able to hatch one last plan. Literally, spat an egg out of his reincarnation. Piccolo's reincarnated form would enter the martial arts tournament, but would come up short after a very intense and brutal fight against Goku. And at number one, the coup de gras, Frieza. Could it realistically be anyone else other than Frieza, the eternal thorn in Goku's side, former emperor of Universe 7 who controlled his own imperial army and is feared for his rootlessness, as well as having maybe the largest ego in the entire universe, the second son of King Cole and the younger brother of the other villain, Cooler. Frieza would be revealed as the destroyer of planet Vegeta, initially believed that Frieza blew up the home planet of the Saiyans fearing the legend of the Super Saiyan warrior. It would be revealed later, however, that Beerus requested Frieza to carry out this action. I guess Beerus just didn't like the Saiyans either, I guess. Frieza, being incredibly cold hearted, would travel to planet Namek after hearing about the legend of the Dragon Balls. Frieza, in the process, would kill all life on Namek in his search for invincibility. Frieza would ultimately fail and awaken the Goku's Super Saiyan ability, ultimately causing Frieza at this time. This still was more faction of loyal servants to Frieza returned to Earth, gathered the Dragon Balls, and brought about the resurrection of F. Frieza would reveal his new golden form and plan on destroying the planet Earth, but not before he could defeat Vegeta and Goku and get revenge for his defeat. Although this golden form proved not to be successful in defeating Vegeta, he would still carry out his plan on destroying the planet. Successful in this, although he destroyed the Earth, he didn't manage to destroy Goku. With Wiz surviving, he used his time travel ability to go back two minutes to when the Earth wasn't destroyed. Goku would intervene in the Vegeta vs Frieza battle and end up killing Frieza and saving the Earth once again. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Ranking the villains was quite difficult as there are some really, really good villains. But if you liked the video, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe. Subscribe. And if you disagree with me, please comment down below your list of evil villains in the Dragon Ball franchise. And remember, have an awesome day. Thanks very much, and goodbye.